You do. Who don't can say hello? Early in the morning. Um. Ooray and up she rises. Do you mind? Up she rises. Ooray and up she rises. Jesus. This is mm. not one of those kinds of videos. Mm. <sighs> Let's commence. Shall we? Yeah, I feel like we need a... Enema. <laughs> <laughs> Please start the thing. Hello Internet, I'm Fireball. And I'm the Orbiter. And there we sing song today, aren't we? We? Well, you haven't joined in yet, so no, just but me. We as in referring... You've got glitter on your face. Well, you do when you live with a crafty person, such as Star Stuff. Oh. Okay, so, hello, people. Yes, that, that's... On Tinterweb really World. Introduction. Do we have follow-up? Oh, uh... We do actually have a yes, couple of things yes. about the channel. Oh, yeah. Which will become uh, irrelevant pretty soon. Uh, I, I, before it disappears from my head. Medicinal use of cannabis is being legalised oh, in the UK. That wasn't what I was for thinking. For prescription at all. by GPs. Is that the THC stuff? I'm presuming so, because you could already get CBD oil, but yeah, which is yeah. cannabis. Yeah, yeah, but the, unlike what you said, but, yeah, 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 but it's it's yeah, it's but not that, the that's that like people saying, really take issue with, other than just the whole sort of buzzword of cannabis is scary. Yeah, that's like saying that a poppy is heroin, though. Yeah, you made that analogy back then. But, um, yeah, but we weren't being recorded at the time, so I thought I would... But it's still part of the cannabis plant. Yeah. But then so is chlorophyll. Jesus. What? Well, that's a load of different plants. The, the, the relevant point I'm making is that it's a psychoactive content that... Um, I don't know what the difference is. I'm trying to sound as though I have a clue what I'm talking about. But I'm assuming there's something different because it's been announced that they're going to be allowed to prescribe medicinal cannabis. Yeah. Oh, and I'm assuming that that's something different from what you've been able to buy for ages already. Yeah. Because there'd be no point reporting it otherwise. <clears throat> also, other news, uh, more to the channel rather than just general news, we have reached affiliate status on Twitch. You were going to say Quitch then, weren't you? Yes, I was. That was a say, but you wouldn't let me have it. No. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Try again. So if you have Amazon Prime, this is slightly... Um, yeah, we're, we're plugging. Uh, preachy, but, you know, whatever. If you do have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to us on Twitch for no cost whatsoever. Yep, and Other it helps than us the out. the price of your actual subscription to Amazon Prime, it doesn't take anything away from that whatsoever. So you just no. have Amazon Prime, so. and you give us a little bit of extra money. So so if you've got Amazon Prime, get yourself onto Twitch, and you, I think you just click on the Twitch Prime thing and start going through the process, and when it gets to the bit about paying for it, you just put use Amazon And then you just Prime have to put in your details for that. Yeah, Unfortunately, it doesn't auto-renew, though, so... Yeah. If you can do it every month, that would be ace as well. Because it is a monthly thing. You, your subscription gets cancelled every month, unfortunately. Uh, because On the other hand, some people watch multiple streamers and want to support multiple streamers with that. So I guess they've just sort of done that for everyone. You can actually now, though, now that we're affiliates, you can actually, even if you haven't got Amazon Prime, or even if you have got Amazon Prime, you can do different levels of subscription. You can do, I can't remember what the middle one is, but the top one is twenty four ninety nine a month. Dollars. Um, but in any case, you, your free Amazon one gives, well, it, but also, it subscribes if you don't, 99 if you don't have Amazon Prime, you can you. subscribe anyway, and yeah. that's just appreciated by itself. And if you do just want to auto-renew, then there's Patreon, which we get all the money yeah. from that, don't we? I think. Do we get all the money from Patreon? Uh, or is it a percentage? I think we get... We're going to get half of the Twitch money. Yeah, uh, but I think we get all the money from that. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, last, well, people that are on SoundCloud, dear listener. Oh, yeah, this will be the first one, won't it? What? This will be the first one that becomes available in its uncut 
entirety as an audio podcast version. That wasn't what I was going to say, but um, you may have been slightly confused by the upload, and I think we are uploading uh, our 100th video as a podcast, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, because Will that be before this one goes out? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had our 100th video where we did a road trip across um, Europe. Not an in, actual one. Yeah, we did uh, in a game called Euro Truck Simulator 2. And basically talk uh, yeah. bollocks all the way. I mean, there is a sort of engine noise in the background for most of it, apart from when the game character slightly cut out. But we made it. Yeah. So th- that's there. So if you're confused why that's there, it's basically just four and a half hours, roughly, of. That's assuming po- that possibly like more towards uh, four I'll hours. Have to check. We'd have to count quite a bit. Because um, I know. When the video version of that goes up on Twitch, we're going to have to split it into parts because of the size of the file. But I don't know if there's a length limit on SoundCloud. I'm assuming not because we are um, pro subscribers for that, which means we can have unlimited uploads. So hopefully that means unlimited length as well. But if you, if you, if you, yeah, if you do want to listen through all four and a half hours, I think there might be the odd spoiler towards the end, might there? Yeah, well, we. If you want to stick with us, let our guard down a little bit. Yeah, a little tasty teaser. Well, I, you you let your guard down. I was four copperbergs into the trip by that point, so yeah, kind of well, an excuse. I was exhausted. Yeah. Your driving's shocking, but we'll let them find yeah. that out for themselves. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not Just never easy. letting behind the. It's not wheel easy driving a truck, okay? <laughs> no, I would imagine not with the ASWD keys. What did you call them? Wasad. Wasad. Or Wazdas. What? Wazdas. Just sounds like um, particularly chavy Asda employees. Okay. <laughs> um, also, uh, we were supposed to, I think, talk about this in the last podcast, but we kind of either we sorted this out after that after we recorded that oh yeah or uh we just forgot to talk about it but we have done things with patreon oh that wasn't what i was thinking but carry on (laughs) (laughs) uh we must have said this somewhere but um i think so yeah it was just you didn't mention the legend status did you no uh so yeah so one dollar, however much that is in whatever currency you have, um, that just gets you access to three weeks of our schedule. I think it no, the next month of the schedule, yeah. So, the beginning of August, September's schedule will go up. You'll see all the past schedules as well, yeah. Um, not that they really matter anymore because the videos are out, they aren't set in stone, they're, they are changed sometimes from time to time, but they're yeah. pretty, pretty rigid, aren't they? Just, Most of the might, time, mistakes so. might change by the time we get to it, especially when things run over and we have to do several so parts on something. But you know, so five dollars a month is uh, what, what's the one dollar a month called? Supporters, I believe. Yeah, so five dollars a month is breaking fans. down fans, and for that, you get. Same as the supporters, but also you get unedited versions of all our videos basically as soon as they're just synced up. So right, almost right after recording. Currently, we'll it's running about, so it's about two to three weeks ahead. Yeah, but that might vary depending on yeah. our procrastination or pro- productivity. We might become more productive, who knows? Yeah, I'm motivated at the moment. Uh the $10 tier, whatever that is in your currency, is... Uh, Bob. Yes. Uh, all, all the other previous... We won't explain Bob. what Bob actually means, because, again, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> it Basically, we played games, a couple of games, for about two hours, two and a half hours, I'm not Just sure. How long we fancied it, really. Yeah. <laughs> Got a bit pissed, played some games, and that's... Mostly unedited, I think. Yeah, it's sure. just a. I suppose it's an area you get to a kind of a live, a drunk live stream, really, and it? it's just not yeah. live. We'll have to do that yeah. though sometime. That gets released at midnight at the beginning of each month. One uh, minute past midnight. All right. Because I'm not sure whether or not 
zero 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 is a.m. or p.m. so I didn't want to risk it. So it's zero 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 one a.m. on the first of August. It's going out. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And what else? Uh, oh yeah, legends. That this is the one that I was actually supposed legends. to say. All of that stuff. Twenty dollars, whatever. Yep, all that stuff. Uh, First of all, you get the entire database that we keep all our plans on. Which is currently running up to 2020, is it? Some mid-February, I think. Things will change in that. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's you will get a few little sneak peeks into what we're doing from there. But and also, something that's very pertinent to the podcast particularly. Dun, dun, dun. If you stick with that for three months... And that's twenty dollars monthly, whether that is a new currency. It is technically sixty dollars in total, but um we'll ignore that. But if you stick with that for three months, this is to stop spammers, uh you will get to star on a podcast. Yeah. And uh, you do get to choose which yep. one. So we because we have a list of the episodes that we have planned, you can pick out of the whatever you fancy. And we should be clear, yeah. um, when we say star on a podcast, we don't mean we just say hello for five minutes. It, it's like you are a third um, yeah. chatter for the whole podcast, basically. And if you are someone with questionable views, we will completely explore, exploit, explore that. <laughs> <laughs> questionable views. Well. We won't pull any punches, but no. we won't avoid anything either. So. No. Uh, Bring it on, bitches. <laughs> but the, the free month thing is to stop just random people paying $20, although we would like to have that, and then just spouting bile on the podcast, which isn't yeah, what this that's is about. Our job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But more bile than we would normally have on a podcast. <clears throat> There's some bile. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Have we got any other follow-up? I don't know. If we remember it, we'll shove it in. <laughs> it were misses. Right. Meow. So shall we get on to today's topic? Yeah, why not? Uh, today, <coughs> we... <coughs> Do you mind? <coughs> were you raised on a farm? <laughs> Do you think I'm a... Do you... Mm. Can you um, stop... Um, just stop, please. Today we are talking about a Pink Floyd album. No, we are talking about animals. Is that a Pink Floyd animal uh, uh, album? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. It is, yes. I believe, I'm not entirely sure, but it's worth checking. I think it's the one where they have the uh, the pig flying over the Battersea power station. I think I saw a, a meme of them replacing it with the inflatable Donald Trump. But you realise that you didn't even have to make noises like that because you yourself are an animal as a human this is true yes i do uh i do know that and that's not an insult um and i'm not a puppet drummer either you are or should i say muppet drummer oh right that's i used to think i was anime no idea why it's like anime but not shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, so a lot of this we are probably going to be talking about vegetarianism because it is quite an important sort of way of looking at the animals other than humans' rights. But we will also talk about animals in the human sense, but not mainly focusing on humanity because that's a very broad subject that will likely cover elsewhere and are just along vague topics because a lot of things within our world are based on humanity because we are humans so we're going to focus on that for most other things but for once we will focus this on other animals mainly i believe we are the only animal on the planet which does podcasts yeah you could say that the dolphins in their calls i mean it's the electromagnetic signals isn't it and they live in pods, don't they? Exactly. Wow. <laughs> I think I feel Us like we can wrap up now and go home. Podcasters. Oh, we are him. Um, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> right. Uh, we do have a relative, I won't name names because reasons, uh, who is uh, vegan, actually. Uh, we won't spend the whole time uh, grating at them. I doubt they'll watch this, but um, if you are watching this, hi, you might uh, want to just... Stop now. <laughs> no, understand that this is just us talking. We wouldn't say this to your face. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are I'm you making planning it on worse. slating no. veganism? Well... Well, let's just get into that generally. Yeah. So, I think the main I don't disagree thing with that. I just it, with that comes to how sentient animals are, mm. because although like initially it's like, oh, I want to, I don't want to take another life, that being animals, but humans to survive have to take, well, have to consume other organisms because. Plants are alive. That's yeah, the I fact. I was thinking about that because uh, the thing about sort of sentience and self awareness and all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, suffering in um, in a species is is something we tend to think of in terms of. Obviously, there's physical suffering, but we we tend to measure the effects of that suffering more in the way that it weighs on a on a on an animal. Uh, mentally don't we yeah um and the idea of um obviously we we are well it kind of led me on to thinking about sort of we think of ourselves as one of the more or perhaps the most advanced species on the planet um so therefore um more mentally capable of or more mentally susceptible to um, the effects of suffering in a in a in a right. mental sense, um, but that that then led me on to thinking, well, that that's only in our in our sort of um, in our definition of advanced. We we think of things in terms of intelligence and self awareness because that's our advancement. Um, yeah. If you thought of the advancement of a species in terms of how well they can fly, for instance. Obviously, the birds well kind of outsmarted in that sense. Well, actually, I think humans are way faster than any other creature at flying, just not through natural means. Yeah, that's true. True. And the only to l leave the air. Well, that's the one. That's one of the things that kind of uh, free flight. That that's one of the things that really defined, I think, the survival of the human race, wasn't it? W when we began to use tools. Yeah. Um, to achieve things. Are there any other animals that use tools? Uh, other primates. To the, yeah. Not to the extent that humans did even in a, a fair amount before proto-civilization. Um, I mean, that must be linked to intelligence, because to a certain extent that involves an abstract concept, doesn't it? Because in, in an essence, if you're using a knife and fork... chimpanzees and bonobos have been observed using tools... Yeah, um, but but that that is uh, that is like an abstraction because if you're using a tool like a knife and fork or a musical instrument or or a rocket or a, an aeroplane or a car, essentially in concept that tool is really um, subsumed, if you like, into your um, being. In, in other words, it becomes a part of you while you're using it. Um, you don't. <sighs> Uh, um, uh, musicians might and, and artists might understand this better than some others, but you, the, to to achieve the best results, you become one with the tool that you're using. Yeah, you sort um, of think of it as an extension yeah. of your arm. Yeah. One of the first things that I learned in drumming was that you're supposed to think of the drumsticks as an extension of your wrist, mm. and think of it more as a part of your arm, and yeah. rather than just an unnatural wooden stick and that that you're holding that process and uh, you know that can extend to i mean obviously as a musician I, I can relate to that in terms of that can extend to playing a piano or, or any instrument that process is really it's a it's an it's a mental thing isn't it it's it's a level of intelligence thing but um, 
other than it's very difficult for even if uh, a dog reached the level of intelligence of a human. Opposable thumbs. Yeah, they would record. That's a thing that they would need to I don't use to. It was, but I, I remember seeing uh, unless they somehow developed something else. I don't know if it was a meme or or something I just heard, but something about a nightmare world where cats um, evolved to have opposable thumbs. I don't know where that came from. I'm going to look that up because I've heard of cats with opposable thumbs. Cats with thumbs. What's, see, that's the second. Well, it's the first actually. Cats with opposable thumbs. No. Oh, it's it's a Cravendale advert. Uh, oh God. <laughs> Please. There's a cat reading a book, The Art of Military Strategy. Where did? <laughs> how in this discussion did your mind just immediately go? Mm, yes, cats with opposable thumbs. Yeah. Well, cats, to me, are evil. We might get into that a bit. <laughs> I mean, look at the difference between cats and dogs in in nature. And I, I know there are very, very varied different... Even within subspecies, there are different tempered animals. But in general, I'm, I'm getting animalist now, but in general, dogs... Uh, are a lot friendlier than cats. <laughs> no, they're fucking not. I'm scared of dogs myself. Yeah, but that's the noise. That's the noise they make. That's the shape of their heads. They just start yelling at you when you go near <laughs> them. I don't like that animal. Well, cats, cat, cats can do that. They as well, hiss, right? but they don't go. <laughs> <laughs> they just go. <laughs> they do a little screech and then scamper off. Usually, if they're really a dick, which is fairly rare to get a. Super dick cat, like a cat from hell sort of situation. I love that film. They will start cats and dogs sweeping at you, but they're not going to go chasing down, chasing at you down the street. They're just going to get you away from them and then go back to whatever they were doing before. I, th- I think the because thi- well, the, di- the you're difference, just a disturbance. The difference for me is a dog will tend to give you a bit of a warning. It will growl at you first, but a cat, you can it can be purring its heart out and and. Make, making you think that it's having the best time of its life, and then within a split second it will turn around and garrot you. A purr is actually <laughs> technically a growl, in, I think. A off, well, scientists are unsure why cats actually purr, but part of it is sort of like actually somewhat heals them, so that's why they do that. Mm. But sometimes it's used as a sort of get away from me. And if you're just a keep. Purr. What? A purr is a get away from me. Well, it is a sort... You think... That's sort of a growl, isn't it? Yeah, but it comes more from the back of their nose than in their throat. Um, It doesn't really matter. It is in itself sort of a warning. You can tell from the rest of the body language that's going on, though, that they are enjoying themselves way too much, to be honest. (laughs) I just... Yeah, well, that that's an interesting concept to bring up in, in terms of animals, then. The whole concept of pets. We will get into that, but mm. um, more on the vegetarian thing. Mm. I mean, there's a couple of things to consider there. We've gone into sentience, so you'd first have to set a sort of threshold for sentience, which I guess is sort of loose, which is probably where you get pescatarians from. Because well, pescatarians probably consider bigger animals to be intelligent enough that they don't want to eat them, but fish just aren't really to that level, what is so the, they're fine uh, eating them. What What is the defining criteria? I mean, I'm assuming, uh, I, I know you're a, a meat eater, yeah. uh, an omnivore, as it were. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume, correct me if I'm wrong, that you would certainly be for um, trying to... Uh, treat animals in, in the kindest way possible, um, you know. Yeah. If suffering can be avoided. I mean, we always buy um, free-range eggs. And it would be um, like the quick and painless ways of killing. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's halal and kosher are very um, painful for the actual animals. Mm. And that's based in religion for how this animal has to suffer or something oh, that's because of tradition and it's annoying um 
I'm not entirely sure of the reason behind that, so don't start yelling at me. So, it's like, oh, it's for this reason, but it's generally I mean, just... if you think of our... our not good. The, our kind of relationship to the animals who um, feed us, if you like, um, and we farm them and that, they they don't they they would clearly hopefully not have a level of sentience where they know what's going to happen but that they're going to be slaughtered and eaten by the humans who are looking after them you yeah. would assume um but there's no way to communicate that to them so how would we know if somebody was doing that to us um i mean think uh, you've seen the matrix films haven't you yeah I know it's a slightly different concept, but it's like if there was a level of intelligence which was, but we haven't exactly superior to us in a similar way. We haven't exactly seen fences. No, but we can't easily leave our planet. I mean, that's a it's a different thing because those animals can see the humans, like, uh milking them for right. example yeah or shaving them yeah so i suppose in terms of the milking thing a cow um but it doesn't naturally assume oh yes what is what is the, going to be my death what is the relevance of the sentient the the level of sentience of a cow um in relation to it being milked um what what do you what do you think the cow experiences from that in terms of what i mean I'd, I'd hesitate to use the word think but what what do you think the cow thinks is happening yeah in that not, instance well that's the thing because generally they think that, like I've, it's difficult to tell how they think with some animals it's easier because they're closer to our own brains right with that level of like not i say because they can't think because if you have thoughts you probably have an inner monologue I, that's like in the english language at least i do find it fascinating looking into the eyes of animals like if you walk past a field that's full of cows they will be right up against the fence and they will stare into your soul <laughs> it's like but it's an interesting experience because it is like i don't know you, you try to relate to it in terms of you try to understand how it feels about standing around in a field all day mm. just eating grass i mean that's a pain in the ass as it is i mean they're huge beasts they're just basically they i mean who who the hell how did they evolve to the point where they literally just have to eat grass all day because that's that's all they eat isn't it mostly um selective breeding yeah which is something we've done. So they, in yeah. a way, they, they, a lot of we've, the animals that are around are actually... They've been domesticated for really. so long that they couldn't exactly just be placed in the wild and function mm. normally. So are they kind of distant relatives to the sort of wild sort of bison and stuff? That, that... Uh, well, bison weren't really around in Europe, I don't think. No. Uh, but what, What's covered like, in bovine? Yaks. Yaks, mm. Along those sort of, things. some but of the generally there'd be some of the Highland cows around here do look a bit yakish, and I'm not talking about the nightlife in Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there was a point where they would be probably have horns, yeah, and charge people, charge well, bulls things still do, don't they? Yeah, um, uh, but a lot bigger horns probably. But I don't exactly. So anyway, know. in terms in terms of the vegetarianism thing, uh, I mean everybody knows the ethical arguments and that. But to you, it comes down to sentience, does it? Here's well, I word. think it has to because otherwise, the life thing is irrelevant because plants. It, yeah. You cannot survive without taking a life yeah. through something. Yeah, it's still organic living matter, isn't it? So unless you take... It doesn't uh, have a brain. Unless you take product from animals or plants without actually killing those things, which vegans take issue with. Um, we need organic um, sustenance, basically. Yeah. Um, unless you take a product from animals or you consume another organism, 
then you're only left really with salt. It's the circle of life. Or other minerals. Yeah. Which you can't really survive on. I have absolutely no problem with uh, the world. Well, I don't know. I say I don't have a problem with it, but I'm going to say the world developing more in a in a in in a way of of actually sort of growing um, meat products, if you like, in a lab. Um, if, if it can be done, yeah, uh, you know, to to the same kind but, of quality. But having said that, what you know, there are there are there are millions of animals alive on this planet simply because we farm them. Yeah, uh, the last. Uh, time I saw an estimate for that sort of thing. I think this is a company that Bill Gates and Richard Branson invested in uh, for synthetic meat mm. was 10 years. I think I saw the thing that that was on last year. I think it was, it's not Russell Howard's good news. It was, he did another one that I can't remember what it was called. It was something with Russell Howard in and he interviewed Richard Branson. He said about that. Mm. So it's still a, while off and that might not even be at a price that's affordable for most people because yeah. it's it, quite a unusual specialist project really so, am i making any sense or am i talking bollocks yeah no you're making sense i uh i'm trying to understand the mentality behind um vegetarianism and veganism in terms of what would the logical end result be for them in terms of the kindness to the animals what um if obviously they the the end goal would be for, for for the entire human race to stop eating and farming animals yeah um but what what would that mean for those animals they kind of just i don't know i mean you can't set a dairy cow free you know let it just kind of well, oh, dairy cows aren't used for meat, so if you're just going for stop eating animals, but not so not necessarily taking product from the animals, then you can well, that, still milk dairy. Cows. Yeah, well, I'm I'm meaning sort of the veganism argument as right. well. Um, I get that. I think less. we're too far, maybe too far down a a, a cul de sac of evolution for that to be practical, because yeah. Uh, basically, an entire, sp lots of entire species but if would, you just, would die out if you just f threw them into a random ecosystem. That would fuck things up because they would overgraze things. Yeah, and or just die, and then rot. Well, they would. They'd likely go somewhere with grass, overgraze it, and then in a practical would be able sense, to, other than the, a couple of plants would be able to survive there. In a practical sense, the safest environmental way to do it would be to have a mass cull. But then that's even worse for that goal. Yeah, because then we'd be still... basically wiping out all the species that we don't need to farm anymore. Yeah, they've never been wild animals. A lot of these. You're not things. systematically breeding them to be killed anymore, but you are still killing them hmm. although I always think because uh, what do you think about cannibalism oh that's a weird one there's even auto cannibalism isn't there yeah I mean at that point it's like I mean who is it really hurting the person is not able to really feel that but um then it think, just it just sort of doesn't sit right with humans in general because it's another human being. But do you think? I mean, the the idea of it needing to be the idea of it being a sentience issue. Do you think it's okay? Um, I've heard of situations where I I don't know if this actually happened, but it might have been a hypothetical situation. But where somebody advertises for um, a dinner date, if you like, where they actually end up eating the. The person who comes to dinner with them, yeah, um, and it's all planned and agreed in advance, and and the person coming to the meal knows that they are the meal, and, and it's but then that's just sort of endorsing suicide at that point. Yeah, I suppose it's euthanasia, it's assisted it's, yeah. suicide. But if there's nothing actually wrong with them, then you possibly want them to. Well, you get into a different issue then, then, aren't yeah. you? Like, do you do you have the right to take your own, or decide to end your own life? <laughs> For whatever reason, whether it's for suffering I, I, or for whatever reason you choose, because it's your life. 
Yeah, but then a circumstance has changed with that. And would you see that as a as a symptom of a possibly temporary mental illness or yes. aberration if you decide that you want to be a meal? Yeah. So I wouldn't allow that, but I would allow uh, for people once yeah. they are dead <laughs> to <laughs> nominate their body to be eaten by whoever so wishes to. So you don't like the sound of a dad burger then? N no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll shelve that idea for now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's taking a weird turn already. <laughs> um, already, we're nearly 40 minutes in. <laughs> Christ. So you said before this, how are we going to spend that long talking about animals? Animals, actually... Um, it's a very wide topic. Yeah, they're, they're extremely varied, aren't they, animals? Well... We're losing a lot. Yeah, but that's not necessarily all due to humans. No. Um, what do you think about the uh, Jurassic Park kind of um, philosophy? Do you... I mean, like for instance, if they could, if they could bring back, if they could use DNA to bring back the dodo or the woolly mammoth or the saber-toothed tiger, do you think it's ethically? Do you think that's a good idea? Or I don't see really how it would be that different to modern zoos, yeah. apart from like upping security where it's necessary, especially you, with yeah. Upping. But you're making an assumption when I say the Jurassic Park philosophy. I don't mean to keep them in captivity. I just mean the general concept of bringing a species back from extinction. I don't see a problem with that, but it's a, in very early stages, so anything mm. like that would have to be done in isolation in case it goes a bit Pete Tong. Yeah. Um. It is a weird one, that. Because you sort of think, well, you know, obviously, if a species has gone extinct, it's for a reason. But, well, I'll say for a reason. It, there's been a cause. I don't yeah. mean there's there's a a reason, a why. But there's no <laughs> um, real reason to just say, well, that's not really a factor anymore. We want to study these animals, or more likely watch them for entertainment. But I wonder if, um, with people who possibly uh, are ethically against that kind of thing, I wonder if you reverse the idea and ask them whether or not, if the human race became extinct, do you think it would be ethically wrong to rebirth the human race from DNA for another species to bring humans back? Yeah. I mean, for instance, if um, robots or AI kind of do get a get a hold, if you like, and 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 get their own sort of independence, if you like, and then humans die out, not through robotic means, but you know there are still yeah. machines in that here. Do you think it would be okay for those machines to bring humans back if they were capable of doing that? I don't see why not. But do you think the people who are ethically against us bringing other species back would be as against humans being brought back? Um, and it really depends on the reason. I think a lot of those sorts of people, uh, well, not necessarily all, I'm generalising, but a fair amount of that is, oh, no, you're playing God to me, which is completely irrelevant. Yeah. You can't play something that doesn't exist. Well, Try playing it's, Monopoly on it's just theatre. Fin air. <laughs> <laughs> All the world's a stage. But it, it exists in, like, all the costumes and shit exist. But, yeah. And all the minds working for it exist, and the people playing those roles exist. But um, I, I've that's always... getting off topic completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what the hell? <laughs> So that's kind of a relevant argument, but I'm not really sure what other arguments there are against it other than... What well, about... There's, um, in those films, Ian Malcolm is the main person, reasonable person at least, against it. Yeah. Uh, for reasons that he's like, 
these are these if you bring these back then it will have a knock on effect that you can't predict yeah but if they're in captivity I don't really see that well you can't predict every outcome of every action that you make can you so it's no. like so you, you then well just, just doing nothing the <laughs> well even then you're still breathing and you're still contributing to the you may biological well just surroundings um, what about without breathing or moving just to move things on a little what about sport sport animal um, animals involved in sport what do you think of that uh, like horse racing dressage um greyhound racing i mean Snow in concept <laughs> um not against it but with the practices that our captain knows like just putting down a horse if it's not running fast enough or if it's got an injury because it's an inconvenience which does happen there's the whipping as well isn't there yeah and with those sorts of things as well they're digging the spurs in at the side don't they they do that yeah um which kind but of puts question the to the whole um, sort of uh, friendship between a cowboy and a horse in movies and stuff, because for most of the time he's riding it, it's torture. Mm. It's just fun. Um, but generally, not against the concept, but against the practices that are generally employed yeah. uh, in well, the current environment. See, the other, uh, I suppose it's... But then I guess with horses, it's a there's a thing about breaking them, isn't there? I remember, and I think um, this almost came up in in one of our previous discussions. I don't know if it was a breaking bollocks or not, but we nearly talked about it. When I do you remember a few years back, I used to play a post horn for a bit of a hobby. Yeah. Um, basically, there was a there's a local guy who has horses, and he was really into um, old historical stagecoaches, and he had a couple of post horns, and he asked if anyone locally would be prepared to come and play the post horn on his stagecoach as he took it around the countryside. And uh, cut a long story short, it was really really nice actually going around um, rural Aberdeenshire on a stagecoach, basically making a knob of myself but 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 it was it was an interesting experience like the sort of thing that you go <laughs> yeah um but to cut a long story short it's talking about the horses at the beginning of the season he would have to build them up gradually to fitness from from the winter sort of break if you like um and they did seem that the more they got worked these horses the more um, I don't know what you would call it. The the fitter they became, the the more settled they seemed to be. But I don't know whether or not that was just a case of them being more tamed, um, like a satisfied workforce or, or what. You know what I mean? Yeah. That they they lasted longer. They had a better temperament, and they were they were better behaved, if you like, and seemed a lot happier when they were being regularly worked. Um. So. It's kind of, I suppose it's almost like horses have been bred to be that as well, haven't they? They've been yeah. not 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 the uh, not the torture thing with the racing and the you know the sort of whipping and, and all that lot, but certainly to be but you trained get, to, to behave in a certain way. Or, I think horses, there are wild horses. Yeah, so yeah. it's not that far of a it's not too much of a step. I don't think to wild stallions. Yeah. Excellent. I have no idea what you're on about. Oh my god! How many people did just say "Oh my god" just at the same time? I did. <laughs> Bill and Ted. I d- watched that film ages ago. Excellent, dude. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> it, I. D- I'm I'm sorry for not remembering something that I watched when I was pretty young. Okay. Um, it's like sorry. asking you to remember anything in your twenties. Yeah, but that was a bit different. <laughs> what? I spent most of it semi-conscious. Exactly. No, I I, I enjoyed my twenties. <laughs> So uh yeah, animals. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, we're sitting <laughs> look, looking at this picture of this cat with an art of military strategy open in front of it. Uh, there is... There are some things that are... Well, uh, with that idea that I was against the practices of current sports with animals, usually. I mean, I think most of the dressage stuff is fine, usually. They keep it in good conditions, whatever. Um, But uh, that perhaps might be the sort of thing that many vegetarians object to because... It's not uncommon for, I mean, it's, when I say not uncommon, it's not like the majority of farmers, but there are a fair lot, there's a a fair few, uh, there's a fair amount of cases of abuse of animals in those situations, and especially with the way that they're killed, or if they're just kept in captivity in really close space. Because it makes more money that way. This is not an excuse because I I totally disagree with the abuse of any animal as well. But that's that humans are humans. There's good and bad humans, and there are yeah. people that abuse other humans. So it's not specifically an animal thing. It's just there's, there's some just shit people. That's but a lot a lot of these sports people do develop a really close relationship with the animals that they're you know sometimes too close. With. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> there have been cases of people being or there have been cases of people being fucked to death by animals how did we suddenly turn down that avenue I don't know I because um a little while ago Nerdcubed did a have you heard of Desert Bus no it's basically a game where you drive down a straight road for eight hours and nothing actually happens other than a fly at the four hour mark lands on your windshield. And he played this game, did he? Yeah, th- th- it was sort of a joke game to say, I think, have you heard of Penn Teller? Yeah. They made it to say what would happen if all the people that said, oh, we can't have violence in video games got in their way. What happens to the fly? Oh, it just lands on your windshield. It doesn't get squashed in I don't think so. Okay. Uh, but he d- d- recently they came out with a VR version, so he did a road trip with many a true nerd and his PR guy, Matt. Mm. Uh, and because it's quite a long thing, eventually they got onto animals fucking people to death. So that's where that came from. Uh, it's not just me knowing about that stuff through experience. And I wonder if they uh, if they were aware that they would be inspiring the material for another podcast and potentially many more. Who knows? <laughs> Don't know. Where are we going with this conversation? Oh, I do Anyway. Um, Dolphin. That was a throwaway joke, to be honest, that got too deep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you think dolphins' blowholes are ticklish? Um... But I wouldn't know. This is going in a strange direction, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I was going to ask, that, aren't there some creatures that are, well, not necessarily creatures, but it's not clear what... What's a sea anemone? A sea anemone. Is that a plant or an animal? What? There are some things that you're not sure if they're plants or animals. Are you... An anemone is a coral reef, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Anemone. See so anemone facts. It's essentially stuff it's... that's attached to to flower. No, it gets its name after the terrestrial anemone flower that looks similar to this creature. So it is a creature. A group of marine predatory animals of the order Actinaria. That's an animal. Well, well like barnacles are animals. They don't exactly look at it because no. they're quite stationary, but but so is... where does the where does the definition end and begin? You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, like you say plants. But generally, insects aren't. I mean, beyond like if you just didn't want to eat insects, because most people get pretty weirded out by that idea in general. Uh, it's a is a wor- But they're generally not can't really be. Does a worm have sentient. a brain? Um, uh, it's a weird one because. 
don't know why I'm asking if you. I remember I'm assuming correctly. you know because you tend to know more than me about everything. But It's a weird one where it's kind of actually spread through their body and that's how they're able to survive, I think. But um, <laughs> I'm clearly not the only person who's been... Yeah, Earthworms have no ears, but their bodies can sense the vibrations of animals moving nearby. I think worms have a brain that connects with nerves from their skins and muscles. Ooh. So it is kind of... Um, An interconnected network of 300 neurons that span their entire body. Well, Yeah, it's across their entire body, which is how they're able to survive when not they're cut in half. Not... Um, I mean, there's an argument that the human brain isn't that just a self-contained thing. It's kind of re- reliant on the central nervous system it's attached to, isn't it? The human brain. Well, it's reliant on oxygen. Y- yeah, but you know what I mean? It's, I mean, um, and oh, that's an interesting thing with phantom pains and stuff like that, when people have got like, their arms been chopped off, but they can still feel their fingers hurting and stuff like that. That's weird. Don't know what it's got to do with animals, but we're, and other than that, we are animals. Um, so, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that works, so I'm not gonna pretend I do. <laughs> I'm panicking. You're panicking. Yeah. Why are you panicking? Because I don't know what else to talk about, but I'm not sure how to convincingly wrap this discussion up. No, there's loads of other stuff to talk about. Like what? Right. I is Donald Trump an animal? Yes. Are you sure? Well, I'm pretty sure. He's able to talk. Yeah, I suppose. But, I mean, I suppose some machines are able to talk, but I doubt he's a machine, he's too... It would be funny if he turned out to be an android. It would be... Um, it just turns out he's the ultimate Russian bot. A robotic orange. <laughs> in or- <laughs> personal form. A robotic orange. Come on. What are you talk- on? I've got no idea. I don't um, know what we're talking about. But something that I sort of sort of concluded, but I might not actually do. But um <laughs> from the whole vegetarianism thing, because of me being concerned with rights of living things generally, um I guess in that context I thought because a lot of my thoughts have been displayed in this discussion that generally a fairly good course of action because also um, animals uh, in agriculture do have a fairly disproportionate impact on the environment for how much food they produce. Yeah. I can, can you get some figures up? For what? What are you doing? I'm searching something to put into the discussion, but carry on. Can you look up the figures for how much they, how much CO2 they input into the... Out, at the Who? Animal agriculture uh, puts into the atmosphere. At least 32,000 million tonnes of carbon dioxide per year, or 51% of all world, 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 worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, but that's something that says cowspiracy, so I don't exactly um, trust that. So can you go to a different site that may be a bit more um, reliable? Well, what, scepticalscience.com? I guess. Well, The Guardian. The Guardian is generally okay. Where's that? Here we go. Raising livestock for meat, eggs and milk generates 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. The second highest source of emissions are greater than all transportation combined. It also uses about 70% of agricultural land and is one of the leading causes of deforestation, biodiversity loss and water pollution. Yeah. Um, greatly in risks, increases our risk of heart disease. So for those reasons, you could develop a sort of, I guess, just being sort of generally conscious of your impact through that yeah. and also just on animal well-being. Uh, so, you know, trying to, when you can, um, just have a night where you just don't eat meat. Because also just generally... If you are a bit older, your metabolism is uh, a lot slower than mine. Yeah. Meat just makes you fat in general, to be honest. If you stop eating meat, a lot of people, you're just not as fat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, um, you know, I don't disagree with the ethics behind vegetarianism and veganism. It's just, it's just not that important to me. And I, I wouldn't... Yeah. I wouldn't 
Um, I would be surprised, actually, if the human race in general didn't like, um, head in that direction. But I'd be happy to allow legislation to lead us in that direction gradually. Because yeah, I like a bacon sandwich. But like if you bacon. are... Because <laughs> I am quite a... I would like to say eco-conscious person, if that's the mm. word. Um, so where I can, I'll try not to use plastic, or at least when I do, recycle them. Yeah. So generally, that sort of idea of just think about it, you know, not necessarily an all-out ban on just, oh, I won't eat meat, I'll stick to my guns, I won't eat meat. I mean, if you don't want to eat meat, that's fine, but most environmentalists don't say, I won't use plastic whatsoever, because that would be over the top and massively inconvenience them. Yeah, although it's becoming more of an option, you know, paper bags are replacing, straws yeah. are becoming le less... Um, so that's the idea, of, just to, oh, well, if substitutes are available and it's not too much of a hassle, say... Just think about it and get on with it and do say it. Say you're at someone else's house and they've cooked a meal for you that does have meat in it, then, you know, you may, whilst you're cooking for yourself, just use a substitute, but don't like, kick up a big fuss and demand that they make it with just Pardon veggies. the pun, but I'm not, I'm not a person that... I'm not... Um, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, I'm not saying, oh, just completely disavow all your beliefs. It's fine if you don't want I to. I but this is just sort of a sort of halfway step, I guess. I don't think it's a bad direction to go in, but I'm, I'm, pardon the pun, but I'm not one that thinks that cold turkey is the right answer. Like, if you think that, you know, the ideal society would be where we're not eating animals, then... I don't think the easiest way or the best way to do that is to just stop today eating animals. I think it's a gradual process. Um, how much should humans, being themselves animals, rise above other animals in the food chain and completely ignore the fact that they are just still part of that food chain as animals? Yeah. Well, we're uh, what, what? What do they call the 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 predator? If you like, at the top of like, the food chain, you're not gonna start evangelizing vegetarian beliefs to a lion because, mm. well, for one, that would probably um put you at risk. But um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? How uh, who who eats us? <laughs> Who eats us? Well, you know, there's a there's a food chain. There's like a pyramid, isn't there? And there's a predator at the top of that pyramid who who is kind of well. Generally, once we are dead, uh, well, uh, various <laughs> um, organisms feed on us on parts that just like dead skin. Yeah, we're being recycled all the time. Yeah, um, but once you're dead, the biggest things are probably like. Worms. And maggots and stuff. Yeah. Unless you're cremated, in which case you just sort of sit in a box. Well, not a box, but in a jar, unless you're not really cared for. <laughs> or if the cannibalism thing comes in, um, possibly other people. My granddad was <laughs> scattered in Bridlington Harbour. <laughs> His ashes, I mean. But the energy still remains there. And, yeah, I mean, um, it's. I suppose it's been dispersed a lot as heat, hasn't it, when you cremated? Yeah, but that generally doesn't go to the benefit of other organisms. No. I didn't say it did, it's just that's what's happened with the energy transfer. It's. Um, but. Um, there's no. Nothing of it disappears, matter or energy wise. From being a sort of amateur biologist, I guess. It is true that a lot of energy is lost up the food chain the more links that you go through. So perhaps um, eating plants is more energy efficient in terms of chemical energy, isn't it? Right, yeah. Because um, energy is lost to firmly regulating whatever organism it is. Yeah. Mm. Which most... Uh, organisms do 
or moving, which even plants do. But well, I suppose that, I suppose then that sort of brings slow. you to a kind of uh, an appreciation of of the whole pet thing, because the domestication of animals isn't just about farming, but it's about companionship as well, isn't it? It's, um, I mean, if we completely cut out animals from the food chain for us, other than domesticated yeah. animals that are if it was just pets, tomorrow then... nobody ate meat then a lot of things would go wrong i think yeah like it wouldn't be a, it, it would be a massive logis- logistical thing where you'd have to just go well i don't know just sort of put these cows somewhere because then there would be too many cows mm. and that would fuck up a lot of plants and other ecosystems because things rely on some of those plants like i said with the overgrazing but it's, it's not a simple thing i suppose in talking about animals a lot of what we've been talking about is vegetarianism but we've slightly branched into other things i guess mm. um i'm sure you probably already know our views on evolution that it is the best theory we have and probably one of the most rigorously tested scientific theories there is Good. So, <laughs> yeah, there's no reason. What do you think we'll that. evolve into? What's the next stage of evolution for this particular animal species? Um, well, it would take a long time, as evolution does, but... Not always. It doesn't always take a long time. There are leaps from time to time. It, it in general, takes a long time on a human yeah, when perspective. I say, yeah, when I say leaps, I'm not talking about, like, in a couple of weeks or years, I'm... I mean, a, a few hundred years would be a quick leap in evolutionary kind of yeah. terms, but but you do get yeah, other um, than you do get observable changes in species um, because like, of um, events that have happened that you people can people nowadays can see are generally taller. Mm. I think that's a thing. But there's there's animals and species that have actually changed color like within the space of a, a year or so because of a, an event that's happened that we've sort of seen seen the effects of if you like right and i suppose i suppose the most likely thing a testament to that species adaptability in that situation humans are some of the most adaptable one of the most adaptable species which is why we've prospered yeah i Uh, suppose one of the most uh well we kind of could be facing that over the next couple of hundred years then because i was going to say one of the most um likely causes of of an a, of a quick change in human evolution will be a change of environment yeah um whether that's caused by a nuclear winter or climate change or what what whatever it's caused by it's but that would it's gonna be <laughs> like say um our whole family moved to say the congo yeah and but talk, that's only um, after a few generations, skin pigment would start changing. Yeah, that's only possible if the environment is survivable. Yeah, um, in the first place. I mean, if something happened to our atmosphere that rendered it unbreathable by humans fairly quickly, and I think I we talked, wouldn't be able to evolve quick enough. In to... history, I believed I talked about guns, German steel, and that's quite possibly why Europeans uh, rose to that sort of dominance, I guess. Because the landscape in places like Australia and Africa were quite inhospitable, like all the fucking carnivores in the world. <laughs> You've got hippos, crocodiles, lions, all the shit that just you don't want to live near. <laughs> we had like horses and cows and sheep. <laughs> so just got dealt easy cars, really. Yeah. Well, horses was slightly brought over, but <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, uh, some theorized changes have been uh, because of the increased reliance on technology. We may have longer fingers that are more designed to tap at screens, but I doubt you could see that sort of change with the rate of human technology. I doubt that sort of change would happen in that way because. Yeah. By the time that sort of thing would happen, we would either be extinct or um, things that don't actually involve hands would probably be more popular. I'm I'm gonna potentially uh, push the conversation in a potentially uncomfortable direction. Um, 
simply because it kind of came into the conversation earlier and we kind of left it off. But in all seriousness, what about the ethical considerations of bestiality? I mean, it's something that you kind of share, you, you know, you smirk and laugh about because it is a, it is a, an embarrassing that, subject. But but what what do you what are the actual? There are people who 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 are into that. Those animals what are is the, incapable of giving consent. So so how because they can't communicate. But but um, I suppose that's a human concept, though, isn't it? Consent. Because I mean, obviously, well, yes. they breed. Animals breed. They don't give each other consent. Yeah, I mean, most of the time they give signals off for that sort of stuff. But I don't suppose they yeah. um, say, oh, "Are you sure you want to go ahead with this, <laughs> Mister Trotters?" Oh yes, Sir Bacon, I would love to do this. But it's, I mean, you know, when you see like on nature programs, you see some of the kind of um, mating. Um, practices, if you like, it it does quite, and 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 some species it does look quite aggressive. Um, it does basically look like rape quite often with some of the species, which is uncomfortable, but um, but necessary to the survival of their species. But us raping animals <laughs> isn't so. Just don't. <laughs> I, I mean there is a sort I'm not, of question raised I'm doing the devil's advocate thing if, here but what if the animal seems to be enjoying it <laughs> clearly that, that wouldn't be rape <laughs> and how would you tell it can't communicate so just assume that's off bounds what not even like by growling or scratching you or purring or <laughs> I don't know. Those could be kinks. <laughs> <laughs> they could be what? Kinks. <laughs> but we don't... Kinky animals. Well, foreplay has been um, observed in other animals. So. Yeah, dolphins. Um, uh, there was a. Th- what was that? The the, uh, the pod. A lot of animals have watched. There was a. There was a BBC thing with it about dolphins. Some Wasn't that something in called- the pod? Po- it wasn't actually called podcasting. No, it was. It, oh, I can't remember what it was called. The series, but but there was a thing about them using a particular plant that's found under under the but, sea um, that kind of got them high, and then they kind of yeah they did the whole kind of. I think trouts do a weird mating ritual. What's fish tickling? I've heard of fish tickling. I, I Trout don't, ticklers. I, I I've heard of don't, that. <laughs> just maybe go into private tabs just in case it's something dodgy. No, I've heard fish tickling. Here we go, fish tickler. Um, tickling trout. Trout tickling is the art of rubbing the underbelly of a trout with fingers. If done properly, the trout will go into a trance after a minute or so and can then easily be thrown onto the nearest bit of dry land. That's a bit, a bit vicious, isn't it? Oh, come here, little tickle. Well, I'm assuming it's for so. In practice, you sort of centuries. Once you've gone fishing, you sort of. Uh, I guess it's kind of like wanking off a fish so that it can't do anything. <laughs> oh my god! Well, it's like if you were catching humans and then you wank them off so that they just didn't actually move, and then throw them on because they're in that sort of weird sort of uh, <laughs> moment. I guess. I, I, I don't know. It's, oh, I've never experienced it. <laughs> uh, and then just like, oh yeah, you're you're in the bucket now. I feel uh, like we've just strayed anyway, into um, some really unpleasant territory. <laughs> if at some point we find other sentient civilizations that can be called sentient and sapient, sapient being meaning wise, but sort of of a human level, I suppose, or more advanced um then would it be because they are of a different species and likely incompatible would it be wrong to have sex with them if they are able to give consent i don't see why but um i suppose the 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 problem then wouldn't be about consent it would be about 
fitting. Biological safety. Did you yeah. did you mean physically fitting? Well, like if they had a very different um physiology. Of their genitalia, yes. Um yeah. where it just there wasn't any way for it to physically work. But then But if it was biologically safe, you could potentially people end up find with a new ways. <laughs> yeah. Um well I there's because different, because spe- like uh, donkeys and horses can breed together. You've got to be careful. But they are still different species because that off, uh, that offspring, a mule, is then infertile. Yeah. Well, the the other thing I was going to think is you you've got to be careful when you're talking about interbreeding of different species because you don't always know which traits are going to be, um, you know, taken from which species. It may well be that the genes that govern well, it aggression... could be that they are completely incompatible. Like if yeah. you, if you did fuck a horse. You wouldn't have a half human, half horse baby that was infertile. It'd be like a centaur, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it, it that just wouldn't occur mm. because donkeys and horses are relatively close on the evolution yeah. tree. Mm. I'm not sure if fucking a chimp would technically produce anything, but don't try it. <laughs> I'm sure somebody must have. It probably, but let's not Google that. No, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I d- yeah you they're... know there are going to be people who are listening to this but we're right now googling that yeah um <laughs> but if there are species on that have developed independently on a completely different planet then they're very unlikely to have any compatibility whatsoever so you wouldn't produce any offspring from that mm. so it's not really to do with that so it would be purely for pleasure yeah, which is sort of like, well, gay sex doesn't produce any offspring, but it's for pleasure, so. Yeah. I guess if they consent, then it's fine, unless it's like they have weird spikes on their dicks, in which case probably just... Um, I'd be, like to make it clear that, safe. I mean, like, this, this isn't, we're not comparing gay sex to bestiality no. in any way, shape, no. or form. Or <laughs> alien sex. It's just a comparison of concepts. Yes. And <laughs> d- d- don't um, rage in the comment. <laughs> I'm by myself, so. <laughs> I just I don't see the point of defining, to be honest. It's like, why limit your options? <laughs> anyway, I think we've rabbited on for long enough. <laughs> so, shall You're we such a bore. end this? weird journey into it has been weird hasn't it this one because we've sort of ventured more into sexuality i think yeah which we'll possibly talk about in another pretty podcast. much this whole episode has been about vegetarianism or veganism and bestiality bestiality and gay sex <laughs> but not not and that they're connected and not a pink floyd <laughs> album in sight how long have we been recording oh oh about yeah, an hour and 17 minutes. Oh, not bad. It's not <sighs> quite as long as some of the others, but yeah. I think we shall end there before we go into too many tangents. I think we've covered most subjects. Yeah, and I fancy a beer. And a Californication, probably. TV programme. I'll send a description. Anyway, is there anything else you'd like to talk about just quickly? Uh... Because nah. you were Googling uh, something. Oh, yeah, what was that? Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, I, I don't really want to open a whole new can of worms. I Just to say, because with the treatment of animals in captivity thing, there was a documentary. I just want to mention this because I wanted to look up as well about the truth behind it. Because I've there's been a lot of controversy over the last few years about the treatment of killer whales and stuff right. and dolphins and stuff kept in captivity at SeaWorld. I think that is generally getting better, but it's still not. Yeah, obviously it's important. Uh, um, fantastic. I don't but the really reason know. that that all blew up and there's been a lot of um, backlash against SeaWorld was specifically because of a documentary uh, called Blackfish, um, which I think won some awards or something. But, but I have heard... Um, from quite a few different sources recently about 
the techniques that were used in that documentary and how there while there are some salient points made it's um it's very biased and the family right. it, there was some stuff that was um used around uh there was some deaths because of uh an accident that happened with a killer whale um there and that was used quite a lot that in the was, documentary the family of one of the uh, kept in a tank that just wasn't big enough for that animal. well i don't know what the truth behind it is but i do know that the family of the person who died were interviewed and their interview they, they've since come out and said that their interview was taken completely out of context and edited in a way that made it look as though they completely held SeaWorld responsible for what had happened whereas in actual fact that wasn't the case right. um that you know they had um I mean, so, this site's probably not the most um, unbiased in itself uh, because it's literally saying 69 reasons why you shouldn't believe Blackfish. Yeah. And I think it's actually a SeaWorld website. but Well, no, it's called SeaWorld Cares, so presumably they're on that. Um, there's a marine mammal trainer site that's... I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's about... that's talking about the... The different stuff. See, we'll document. See, there's a Daily Mail thing here as well. I wouldn't trust them. No. But generally, this, they did distort the truth. It, yeah, it's even not if those as animals weren't cut as kept they, in good because conditions, the, the documentary Blackfish didn't. There is a the there is something to well. be said about the necessity sometimes of keeping some animals in captivity to. Can safeguard the species. Um, oh yeah, and a we lot did, of um, Sea World's work is done in in conjunction we were with going conservation to wrap up, societies. But we did say earlier about um, the ethics of keeping pets, and also we'll talk about the zoos briefly. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think in most of those, the animals are happy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's hard to measure those sorts of things, but. You kind of get the impression. You've kind of got. I mean, you've got. You've got humans have. I think a certain amount of empathy. Yeah. With other creatures, but it tends to be for partic- uh, particular kinds of creatures. Yeah. Charismatic creatures. And um, I mean that you know dogs and humans have a have a long history, um, and it does seem to me that that there's a mutual. Um, I don't think you see many people crying over a dead spider. No, no. Which is, uh, and then perhaps it's to although, do. Although, having said that, they people do keep tarantulas as pets in tanks yeah. and stuff, don't they? I think generally bigger animals, because their face is more clear, are generally more sympathised with. Yeah, but also more expressive animals. Dogs are quite expressive. Like you can see them being happy if they've got their tongue out and are trying to lick your face. Yeah. But a fish's expression doesn't really change much. You can't really see emotion there, I don't think. Yeah. So I think in general, it's just use a bit of common sense, isn't it? It's, I think you can tell if an animal's suffering. Yeah. Most of the time. Mm. Oh, there is um, something I quickly wanted to give a brief shout out to there is a youtube channel called tear zoo uh not it's tear spelled t-i-e-r oh right okay yeah yeah and it's not like a place where you go to try and make animals cry no (laughs) uh they basically make videos uh sort of treating you can bring it up on a little google search so i can show you one of them what's that uh, Tear. Tear Zoo. Or just go to YouTube to search, I don't know. Um, but they make videos sort of treating uh, life in general as, of all organisms, as a sort of big MMO where you choose your own character sort of thing. All right, okay. Uh, the tear comes from sort of tears of how good they are, I suppose, at yeah. being them. 
Okay, so we'll take a brief break from actually talking to, so that I can show uh, one that I think showcases uh, this relatively well. Go. So, uh, that talked about are humans OP, overpowered, if you don't know what OP stands for, and talks about, uh, in a, a sort of weird sort of, uh, I guess, meta look at your own species as a sort of character, I suppose. Well, like as a um, species that like rise to dominance and why that happened, but... yeah. Should we necessarily take advantage of that and then just use it to just to benefit us, or should we well, take a moral stance and say, "Well, it depends." I mean, we have empathy. It's easy. So we it's don't easy to forget else. in the world that we inhabit now that up until quite recently, it has just been a struggle for survival. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we even, can't guarantee that it's not going to return to that at some point. Even a couple hundred years ago, it was pretty much a struggle for survival other than a few, like the aristocracy. Yeah. But we're now at a point in life where most people can get onto <laughs> inventing stuff and exploring I suppose I su- abstract ideas I mean while it's easy while it's easy to forget for survival that, that 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 has been the case in the past it's also it also seems fairly natural to try uh, when when we're in a relatively comfortable position um evolutionary wise it does seem fairly natural to try and get as far ahead as we can while we've yeah. got the chance you know um but the, then the threat's not necessarily as obvious. Um, I mean, certainly when you see some of the weather extremes that we've been experiencing over the last few years, you do wonder <laughs> what... It, I mean, I know it's not kind of... Uh, I know it's only a film, but the, you just remember the day after tomorrow, I know that sort of thing's not sort of scientifically plausible, but... You, what was that film about again? Um it was uh, basically the the collapse of the jet stream and then the ensuing ice age that basically right. tries to wipe out the human race. Um, well, not it, consciously. No, no. Um, but, it, I mean, but that, it, there's a delicate balance. It's more in, likely that that would go the other way and uh, more... Well, not necessarily... Um, Deaths just being caused like all over, like a complete just heat dome across the whole earth. So people overheat mm. in general, but just more extreme weather coming about because of that. But you see, see what I think. Quite often, like, so you look at things. when when we see some of the weather systems that happen on other planets, like say, uh, I think Venus is particularly hostile, isn't it? Obviously, Venus is uh, what a lot of climate scientists look to- at for um information on not because we're not likely to get to that sort of volatile level yet especially since we're not that close to the sun um but other planets have very but, you know violent the, atmospheres the same laws of physics apply and it does have i think a, it has a very venus has a very carbon dioxide rich atmosphere which is why that happens so mm. us putting out too much carbon dioxide is going to have a negative impact. Yeah. Because 20 is generally the optimum temperature for humans. I mean, we, we shouldn't assume that. But it's... I think it's risen by... We shouldn't assume that the Earth can't turn into an inhospitable environment for humans. Rising <laughs> by a few degrees causes major um, events yeah. that humans aren't really built to deal with. Mm. I think it's already risen you by. Kind of have to look at the awesome power of nature. I mean, some of the hurricanes and yeah. some of the storms that you get, and just just have a bit of respect for I the environment that you live in. You know, it's... watched a Kurz Gazakt video recently that said about um, what would happen if you sent a nuclear, if you sent uh, something equivalent to the Tsar bomber into the Mariana Trench. Yeah. Things in the immediate area would be obliterated but the pressure of the water would immediate would pretty quickly force it to shrink 
because there's more pressure there than yeah. there is on the surface, so it wouldn't right. even rise that much. Yeah. It would just be become a sort of bubble and then shrink. Yeah. And it wouldn't move the earth that be, much. Be contained. But <laughs> things like um, uh, a lot of uh, earthquakes have moved the Earth's orbit significantly. Well, not significantly is uh, quite a relative thing, but well, it has any measure of any measurable amount is significant if you're talking about moving a planet. <laughs> yeah, so t- nature is way more powerful, well, in terms of just the Earth undergoing normal functions is way more powerful than humans will possibly ever be mm. until we manage to for some reason strap rockets to a planet nothing like massive really powerful rockets yeah which first of all you'd need a reason to um that sort of stuff is just not going to happen i don't know what we're getting at with animals now but um no maybe more just the impact of humans but (laughs) i think i did uh put humanity as one of the future topics quite a long way down the line but oh, really uh, we could perhaps go into more detail then yeah whenever that is but anyway we should probably wrap up because we've been talking way longer than we expected indeed anyway, that's not like us no <laughs> anyway let's stop quick escape <laughs> let us out quick i have been fireball i've been the orbiter and this has been breaking box episode 17 animals. Bye. See you next time. Boop, boop, boop. Bye. Thanks for watching. We would really appreciate if you support us on various things, obviously subscribing on YouTube, Twitch, following us on Twitter or Facebook. We have a Discord server that you can join and talk to us and other people, and a website where you can check out blog posts. And obviously this isn't free for us to run, so if you'd like to support us financially, we have a Patreon page where you can donate monthly and get subscriber rewards. We also have a Stream Elements tipping page where you can make one-off donations. The links are all in the description. Farewell. See you next time. I don't know what I'm on about. I've gone a bit weird. <sighs> we don't have any pets, do we? No, there's a good reason for that. Let's not start again. <laughs>